Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the final LEGO Avengers Endgame set review. This time we're covering the notorious Avengers Compound Battle. And the setup for this one is 76131. The recommended ages are 8 and up. And an SP discount of $699. While the price point is a whopping $100 that I would not have spent if I was not doing this video. Spoiler alert. This is also going to be a little bit of a weird review. I don't exactly have time to record a ton of extra takes like per segment so I'm just gonna have to stick with what I record no matter how it goes because I kind of have to leave for Star Wars Celebration Chicago really soon and I hope you will bear with me this is probably gonna be a long review especially because we're gonna be tacking on one big final uh, closing segment on all the end game sets in general and I'm gonna have them all here in the shot so if you want to skip ahead to that if you don't really care and you've seen the set you're more than welcome to do that otherwise uh, we're gonna get started with what potentially may be the last set for the Infinity Saga and potentially also the last set featuring RDJ's Iron Man, uh, Karen Gillan's Nebula, Josh Brolin's Thanos, and uh, Mark Ruffalo's Hulk, all four of which I think are, are you know, at risk of dying. So that's why I said that. You know, we, we should probably get started. All right, this may be it. This could be one of our last, if not the last, Lego Iron Man minifigure for Robert Downey Jr. for at least a long time. I mean, Man, at least LEGO didn't lower their standards. This is as consistent with the other Iron Man minifigures as you would hope. The brand new and updated torso and leg designs for the Iron Man Mark 85 are really nice, looking really fantastic, and I cannot wait to take inspiration from these for my own custom minifigure when the time comes. The red highlights, again, being present here, just enhancing the design that much more. All the designs for the LEGO Iron Man minifigures over the years have always been super impressive, and this one is definitely no exception. I would say that I still do prefer the Iron Man Mark 50 from Avengers Infinity War. I just think this design is cooler and, the, and just a bit more vibrant, but that's really no fault of LEGOs. I'm sure they tried to make this as accurate to the new and final Mark 85 suit as they could. And of course, the Mark 85 does implement uh, the same color scheme as the Iron Man suits from the comics, so LEGO tried to emulate that here by doing gold arms instead, which I think is definitely really cool in making this minifigure unique. The faceplate is the exact same one as uh, you just saw as the one from the Mark 50, um, so that's really nice to have back here again with the blue eyes, and of course the face mask does flip up. Man, I remember when this piece was first introduced back in 2012 and just how cool it was. It's so, so awesome to see how long uh, it has survived, and, and man, of course, we do have the uh, Robert Downey Jr. phase underneath there, the newer one that uh, was first debut with the Infinity War set, looking really faded this time, unfortunately. You may not really be able to see, but it's like the printing is no good here, unfortunately. And so if we just go ahead and twist it around, though, of course, we do have the facial expression that has the HUD printed on it, that aggressive facial expression, which is so, so awesome and really great to have uh, potentially one last time, and man... If this really is it for Iron Man minifigures for Robert Downey Jr., this is uh, no Silver Centurion. It's it's no War Machine from the Bricktober pack, but it is a really solid uh, addition. And so I think this one is worthy of being the last one if this really is going to be it for RDJ. And then we got this piece of crap again. Nice torso. Great design on the back. But wow. The rest is still just so disappointing. I've talked about this one a couple times already, but here we are, Avengers 4. Avengers Endgame, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, she's she's got Black Widow's hairpiece, a misprinted Amelia Clark head from the Han Solo movie, and this is clearly a QC problem because this also happened when I first got this minifigure in the Captain Marvel Scroll Attack set, and no double-molded boots. I don't really think it was a lot to ask, but clearly LEGO did not see any reason to devote any resources toward making this into a decent minifigure. This is uh, really just baffling. I mean, wow. Like, LEGO had to try to make this minifigure this bad. Nebula coming in one last time, though. I think she's definitely going to die. She's got a brand new printed head, and so this one is uh, very similar to the one that debuted with the Volume 2 sets, except now she's got a more calm and toned down expression, so it's really nice for LEGO to come in and add that variety and just change up the design a little bit for Endgame. So that's really cool, and I do appreciate that. And then uh, all that, of course, all that design work continuing on to the back. And she is also in the Quantum Realm suit, and I talked about these several times. It's a shame how uh, Lego and, and Hasbro and the toy companies abuse these, but 
hey man, you can't blame them. It's just uh, this one in particular has a bit of a QC problem as well. You can see the alignment is way off for the torso. It, it like bleeds a little too far over to the left here, which I noticed. That's kind of surprising and, and you know pretty irregular for Lego minifigures as far as my experience goes. But she also has her sword here yet again. Um, and you know again the the torso legs, the the back of the torso for the Quantum Realm suit, still fantastic. But just of course very repetitive. Um, but it's really nice to have Nebula one last time. I think her story ends with the defeat of Thanos, though, and so she's probably dead. We do have the brand new Ant-Man micro figure in his Quantum Realm suit, so this is really awesome, it being in a base color of white with the entire silver head uh, printed on, and so that looks really good yet again. The exact same design um, for the head as it was with the 2016 Civil War Airport Battle version, but of course this time you have the brand new Quantum Realm designs um, for the front, which look really awesome. And you do get two of these, which I always appreciate, Lego including uh, two of these micro figures. Um, at least as far as the uh, superhero sets go, they always included extras, and so I'm glad to see that they uh, did it once more uh, here for the compound battle. For the biggest set, it's kind of surprising that we only get one Outrider. I mean, we literally get three in the Captain America set, two in the Hall of Armor. I mean, it's just kind of surprising you only get one here, but hey, man, it is what it is. They're back again. This is this is one of the uh, standard variants, so no gold Wolverine claws or shoulder armor for this guy. I'm not even going to take them apart. You've probably seen them before. Um, yeah. And on to the big figs, our new Hulk is using the exact same mold as the one from Age of Ultron, this time though with a brand new print for both the face and the shorts. And the face is obviously a lot more toned down and, you know, a lot of people don't like the face. Personally, I don't mind. I think it adds variety. You know, we've always, we've always had the aggressive facial expression. So to have this one be a bit more timid and calm, I think kind of lends itself to how the Hulk has, you know, sort of come into his own with Thor Ragnarok and Infinity War and kind of uh, adopt his own personality so I don't really mind this I think it's fine um, and pretty cool looking actually but uh, the blue shorts you know and, and you know the, the lines and the detail on them is nice but it's like I guess Lego was looking at concept art or they, they just kind of wing this one or who knows because obviously we know that for the most part, the Hulk is going to be in his Professor Hulk costume and in the Quantum Realm suit. So far, we have no reason to believe he's just going to be in his regular appearance wearing uh, navy blue shorts of all things. So no idea where this came from. He still doesn't have any toes, but hey, this isn't bad. What is bad, though, is the now infamous Thanos Big Fig for the Avengers Endgame sets appearing here exclusively in the compound battle. Wow, is this disappointing. Listen, man, I get it. Lego rehashing the 2016 Avenged comic accurate mold for, you know, the Infinity War sets and now even for these sets, but I'm still disappointed. You know, I, I can't help but look at this and, and just feel like there is so much more potential here had Lego just updated the mold and made a new helmet to really make the most out of such a great and now iconic character, but instead... We've got the same mold yet again, you know, and I, I get it, you know, I, I, for budgetary reasons, I understand why Lego would keep it, but it's just, it's just not Thanos' helmet in the MCU, it, it just doesn't look consistent, and I, I get it that at least it's now somewhat accurate considering he is wearing the armor again for Avengers Endgame, but that really doesn't help too much. At least the printing is nice. You know, the base color of gray, I think, is better for Thanos. And this torso design is fantastic. The arm printing, I really appreciate um, for both arms. The printing on the helmet, you know, is, is not bad. But it's just, man, I really wish Lego would have done more. I, I, you know, it's just, I guess I was wrong to expect more. Kids are not going to care, really. Um, but, man, I don't know. It's just several years ago when I pictured what... The final Thanos big fig would look like for Avengers 4. I just expected something better than this. And now he's got this jackhammer thing that Lego made for him. I don't know what they were looking at, what concept art got them to make this thing, but um, I guess we're, we're not even going to do the double-bladed sword this time. They kind of had a version of it for the Infinity War sets last year, but now it's just, uh, now we've just got this hammer and we're just playing whack-a-mole. Um, the Infinity Gauntlet is still included. You can kind of see it in the background there, and I'll bring that in when we start to discuss the actual compound, but... You know, it is what it is. Maybe it doesn't disappoint you as much as it disappoints me. I know I'm definitely going to do my best to make something better than this. Um, but yeah, man, I just feel like if LEGO 
was able to somehow include it in their budget and, you know, update the helmet mold for what is now one of the most iconic villains of all pop culture. It would have been a really great send-off for the character considering he's not going to make it past Endgame, I don't think. But, uh, you know, this is it. This is our final Thanos big fig. And it is what it is. So we're going to talk about the compound playset in just a second, but of course, before we do that, we have to discuss the stupid car and the stupid helicopter. Listen, man, they're not actually that stupid. They make sense for the playset. Obviously, they help the set sell well. This is really good for kids. I mean, the set is on back order. I don't think LEGO was necessarily wrong to include these, but again, they're stupid and really aren't exactly natural for the set because you look at, say, the Spider-Man Far From Home sets, the upcoming Stark Jet, and you have a couple drones thrown in there, which you could argue are a lot more natural for that set. Whereas this, it's just like, listen, man, the culmination of the MCU and the entire Infinity Saga and everything we know up until this point, I don't think they would be coming at Thanos in a little Outrider or helicopter. But again, playset for kids. That's what these are. That's what they're designed to be. And so, with that said, we'll move that out of the way. Move that out of the way. Okay. And we've got little Outrider thing, car, buggy, whatever. And you can see it's uh, it has four wheels. It rolls. And there's a driver's seat and a steering wheel. I bet you couldn't expect it. And I just love it. Especially the logic of it when you look at this thing on the back and how you're supposed to, you you know, Nebula and Iron Man are the ones who are supposed to use it. And it's like the culmination of Iron Man's intelligence in the entire MCU and his endgame and everything leading up to this point has been for Iron Man to hop in the, in the freaking buggy in his my Iron Man Mark 85 suit and, and, and then have Nebula hop on the back with this uh, rotating stud shooter platform turret and then uh, they attack Thanos in this thing like that. This is fantastic. I mean, man, this is clearly a spoiler for Avengers Endgame. This is going to be it. Ladies and gentlemen, this this is how Avengers Endgame will end. I, I think this is great. And you can see it even has doors that don't open on the sides. You have the Avengers symbols as stickers there and there. Uh, if you didn't uh, mention it a second ago, but the turret is, of course, a couple of stud shooters. You can fire the stud shooters by pressing the gray pieces in. That stud flew off my studio and is officially gone forever, as is uh, the case with every time I fire these during a review. And if you didn't already see, there is a little control panel, and that's a little sticker on a cheese slope right there. If that would focus, that would be fantastic. I really don't feel like doing a separate angle. So there you go. There is that. And and also you have a license plate on the back, which is additionally a thing. And that is a really lopsided sticker, but I could not care less. And otherwise, the hood is cool. And that is it for the buggy. And now we can move on to the helicopter. And while this shot is getting dark, apologies for that. But you can see it's definitely a helicopter. It's It's got uh, the, these things on the top rotates like it spins as, as you would expect for a helicopter so that's great uh you have the actual cockpit piece that opens it's just a two by two piece and that just flips up like so a couple hinges you got a two by two available space in there and of course captain marvel needs a helicopter to fly and so you've got her control panel piece in there and that's a nice sticker as well and you basically take her slot her into that two by two available space and now captain marvel can finally fly because you know that she couldn't before and so that is really great lego uh, so considerate with their ideas for the characters and you also do have a couple stickers on the sides here these panels here and then uh here as well you even have a fire extinguisher clipped in here so lego gets their gag in one last time got the avengers symbol as a sticker on the back here obviously these flaps are adjustable if you care and then you do also have uh the uh, hinges for the for these things on the top i i forget what they're called the the propeller the 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 the, the, the things and then you also do have uh some clips on this side as well or at least one clip for an additional accessory uh, you have you know some some available studs for minifigures to stand up on i mean you have a lot of play with this tiny ass little helicopter and so that is great and of course you'll notice the stud shooting minigun on the front and so we'll take thanos here as our guinea pig and you can rotate this however which way you want and you fire all six studs and i'm about to lose all these forever so i'm definitely not re-recording this here we go one two three four five six Okay, I, I, three of those flew off the, the studio, but I but th three of them are still on here, so that's great. Uh, yeah. But as for the Avengers compound itself, man, it's uh, 
Not so good, man. It's just, uh, wow. When you compare this to last year's Sanctum Sanctorum Showdown, where you not only had a fantastic balance of playability and just a, a great playset for kids, but you also had a ton of little details and fantastic elements throughout that build that just made it so awesome for all ages. And Lego, now a year later, is just like, hey, what if we just ditch the other demographics altogether and we just make a straight up play set. I guess the Sanctum Sanctorum must not have sold too well or something. I don't know. And uh, now we're left with this. And listen, man, it could have been worse. Honestly, in person, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but that's not saying much. Included with this set, before we get started, we have a ton of Power Blast pieces for Captain Marvel that I did not cover in her minifigure segment, so if you haven't seen the Power Blast pieces before, here they are, and in this separate angle, you can see I've got them laid out much in a much nicer fashion, and uh, so those are really great to have in Trans Orange. Again, we've got Captain Marvel joining the Fire Nation, so that's always fun, and you can take Captain Marvel and uh, actually put her on this uh, Power Blast uh, platform that is included, which is really cool. Haven't really seen Lego, uh, you know, make anything creative with these Power Blast pieces so far, so I think this is definitely kind of awesome and a really great way to have your characters flying, and so you kind of do that and that, and there you go. She's Princess Zuko, and now we can set her aside, though, as we cover the rest of the set, and man, where to begin? I guess since we just love that buggy so much, we'll start off with the garage, and so the garage ho actually holds both vehicles because you can see on the top we have this giant Avengers A that's one big sticker and a very nice piece if I do say so myself and we have a couple more stud shooting turrets on the top these can bend up and down and so again you press down they fire and then the stud is gone forever and that one hit the floor. Yep, it's gone. And so there is that. I'm not going to fire all of them. And you have uh, this radar dish in trans orange. So uh, that's a thing and can rotate if you kind of just tilt it up a little bit. So uh, there is that. And then we also do have this really nice, uh, you know, fence, gate, gate fence. And so that's on a connector and can fold up like so. You got some lights there, some clearance lights, some warning lights, some whatever lights. You even have a really cool garage door, which I must say is actually a lot cooler than I was expecting. I don't, I've personally never had these pieces before. And so this was a genuinely uh, a surprise for me and you can fold it up like so. It's actually got like a, a little track up inside there. Let's see if I can show it to you so I don't have to do a separate angle in post. Uh, you can kind of see it you you really can't see it but there's a track up there and it and it's really nice um and so as you can see we have a ton of available space for the buggy, even have a couple stickers for added detail on this platform here and so the idea is you take the buggy and oh boy you didn't even you couldn't even guess you you're not going to believe it but it goes in like so and up oh, it goes in like so and you park it and that's how you, that's how you that's that's what that's for. It's a garage. So I, I bet you you didn't see that one coming. Uh, rip Quicksilver. But we can go ahead and take the helicopter, and it's supposed to land on that little Avengers A platform. I wanted to mention that at the beginning of the segment, but just forgot. And so it goes on like that really nicely and it kind of stays in place which i appreciate and so there is that and uh just getting uh, iron man back out of the garage though because we had to prepare him for his final act of, of bravery with nebula against the mad titan in his uh, buggy there uh, we can talk about the rest of this thing and so you'll notice on the outside of the garage we've got a door check it out it is a hundred percent a door and uh, it's got a little door handle, which I bet you didn't expect. You have all kinds of little tools that are removable that are clipped in uh, to these clips. And you also have like a, a canister with whatever that tool is. I forgot. And even more windows behind that. So that's really nice. On top of the platform that is on top of the, or on the platform, on top of the garage, you have a bridge. And the bridge is uh, a bridge. And you can basically take minifigures and have them walk across the bridge like so. So it's really great for play. And, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I kind of need Iron Man to come out of the buggy. And I need Nebula because they're going to demonstrate a few things here. So the idea here is now that we have reached the back of this thing, we can talk about the back. And you can see you take a minifigure. You got them on top there. It's a really nice bridge. And so, but for whatever reason, you've got like a turnstile door. <laughs> so... I don't know about you, 
but I don't see why this is entirely necessary. I mean, like, a regular glass door like the one down there would have been fine, but, you know, the Avengers have to be cool. So you walk up, and this thing spins around, and the Nebula has to has to stand in it like, like so. Oh, I knocked over a chair. She has to stand in it like so, and then be spun around into the super secret uh, war room, meeting room, area, office, building, as LEGO calls it on the website. And then the idea is you take Iron Man, you, you stuff him in there, kind of like that on one of the chairs. You got like three black chairs there and Nebula can just kind of stand there looking all upset because she's always upset, man. She got torn apart by Thanos most of her life and then things just didn't go very well from there on out. But you can see we have the Avengers like like super cool seal which is just a, one of those disc pieces that we've seen throughout the Endgame sets, like in Captain America's motorcycle set, so there's nothing really cool about that, but definitely kind of nice, really gives off those Justice League vibes if you're a DC person, uh, but then you also can see Captain Marvel right there, and you got all these cups, and you've even got like uh, a bottle, which could be, you know, whatever you want it to be, and you can actually remove the table itself, and then underneath, man, if I was a kid, this would be like my favorite feature in the whole set, you've got hidden guns, Check it out, man. Hidden guns. You've got an Alien Conquest pistol in here, which is great. Who doesn't love the Alien Conquest pistols? And then you've also got one of these pistols, which I was genuinely not expecting. You've got, you've probably seen these pistols before. It's really nice to have them back. Um, I, I'm really glad they're kind of making a resurgence with Lego sets now because they were always fantastic all those years ago when they first debuted, I think, with the Indiana Jones sets. And it, it, it's been, you know, pretty rough getting these for like the last, God, I don't know, seven years or however long it's been. So those go underneath the table and you can stick the table itself back on the table and so it's great, definitely a great table. And so anyway, future Ross cutting in here, I forgot to mention this, uh, you've also got a wall back here, which uh, sh I just lifted off the whole r roof, o okay. Uh, you've got this wall which says, alert, uh, single outrider inbound. I mean, listen man, I'd be pretty concerned too, so it's really great that somebody at LEGO designed that entire screen uh, for this set, and now I have to figure out how to get this back on. Uh, moving on to the bottom, you can see we have a little computer station which uh, can rotate on that little 2x2 two two rotating piece. We've got a printed keyboard, you might have seen that piece before, with a little laptop screen that actually uh, keeps that turquoise theme going that LEGO's had going for all the end game sets, but it's got the Infinity Gauntlet on it, because as we know now, uh, uh, spoilers in the Infinity Gauntlet is still in, in Thanos's uh, possession and then we also do have this panel on uh, the door here that's actually guarding the Infinity Gauntlet itself which is included with this set which I'll get to in just a second as a matter of fact I probably already mentioned that previously but basically the idea is we'll take uh, Nebula again to demonstrate and uh, you take her and then she kind of walks up to it and it's like man minifig hand it, that, that's all you need, man. I assume it's probably like coded to their specific uh, DNA or, you know, fingerprints or handprints or, or whatever prints Lego minifigures have, their, their, uh, the, their claw prints. And so you have this little hinge, this little piece on the outside wall. And so you're supposed to pull this out and inside you have the Infinity Gauntlet itself. There it is, man. Again, you've got just, uh, I guess this is kind of a spoiler, but too late. You've only got the Power Stone and the Time Stone. So I don't know, man. Maybe the battle gets, this is, this is probably indicative of nothing, but let's entertain the idea. It gets pretty intense when they try to steal the Infinity Gauntlet back and then Thanos, like a, a bunch of the stones get knocked out of it and they only come back with the Power Stone and the Time Stone. That's probably not a thing in, in the movie at all, but uh, it, it is in this set. And so of course, if you didn't know, spoiler alert, you can you can take the Infinity Gauntlet off of that little post there. We can bring uh, Thanos back in and instead of uh, playing whack-a-mole, he can just, uh, you know, uh, you know, have his hand dismembered. You can put the Infinity Gauntlet on and he's still got the Power Stone and the Time Stone so he can just, you know, reverse time and, uh, you know, use the Power Stone to, to kill them once and for all because for whatever reason he respected them too much and, and didn't in Infinity War. And so you can just... We're not going to do that, though. We're just going to put his hand back on and throw him over there. Um, and so you'll also notice, I'm sure if you didn't already, uh, you have a bunch of like red lightsaber blades, which act as kind of like, you know, a security shield, which is pretty cool. And if you want to see how this whole thing clips in, uh, there's just a giant like, uh, you know, like four by five available space for this whole thing to just slide right in place. And, it, and, it's, and it's great and clips in very nicely. And you'll also notice this wall has the Avengers symbol as well on this panel. And that is a sticker. And then finally, on the top, we've got this. Check it out. It's a turret. It rotates. And uh, that's great. And it's also 
the spring-loaded shooter pieces. So that's really awesome to see because I think this is our first and only time getting the spring-loaded shooters in the Avengers Endgame sets, if I'm not mistaken. So it's really great that they're at least appearing here. So we'll take our one singular surviving Outrider and use him as our guinea pig. And basically, if you don't know how spring-loaded shooters work, it's been a while. You just push down on them and they fire like... Uh, or no, you push up, I think. It, it's up. No, it's down. You push down and they fire. Wow, I actually hit him. I think that might have been the first minifigure I've actually hit successfully with a playability feature in all of the end game set reviews. And so I think that about does it uh, for this whole set. It is a uh, pretty great play set for the most part. It's just, you know, obviously a lot more geared towards kids with not much else to offer to other demographics. I mean, it's a... Uh, it's okay, it's just I think a lot of us can agree that this could have been even better and we could have had like, you know, a bigger HQ, we could have had a better garage or just something, maybe an additional building if LEGO just skipped out on the car and if they just skipped out on the helicopter. But obviously the helicopter and the, and the car are great for kids and, and, and help the set sell better, I suppose. I mean, like I said, the set is on back order. So, I mean, it's kind of tough to question Lego's logic because apparently it works. And so you got your, uh, your disappointing Thanos. You've got your decent Hulk. And is this set worth $100? Oh my God. No, no, absolutely not. Like I said at the beginning of this video, there's no way I would have picked this set up if I wasn't doing this video. And listen, it is a decent play set, but it really pales in comparison to last year's Sanctum Sanctorum Showdown, which was a lot more interesting, a lot more exciting with its features and functionality and all of its little details that are so absent with this set. And not to mention, you're paying a lot of money for the Thanos and Hulk big figs. I mean, this set has far less pieces than the Ultimate Quinjet, but you're paying like literally $30 more for the Thanos and the Hulk big figs. And listen, man, they're not worth it. They really aren't. I would absolutely just, you know, get those on Bricklink or something a year from now when you care, if you really do. I mean, it's just not worth it. If you're a kid, you know, eight or younger, I would say, this set is probably the best thing that'll have ever happened to you. But otherwise, man, it, it's not the best it's not exactly what I would call a grand finale set for this whole last decade that has been the MCU up until this point in Lego Marvel. And it's not exactly a culmination of Lego Marvel superheroes either. You know, for a set that really should have been a celebration of all of Lego's work with the MCU sets, it uh, really comes in and had a pretty uh, disappointing new low standard for Lego. But at least some of the Endgame sets are better than this. And I would again recommend the Ultimate Quinjet over this one any day of the week. So again, I would not recommend this set. Even if you are buying it for a kid, $100 is too steep. You're just paying too much for the big figs. It's not worth it. And with all that said, let's take a look at the box and the instruction manual so we can wrap up this last review. Guys, I'm getting kind of emotional. This is the last box for the Infinity Saga. For, the, for this part of the MCU, the last 10 years, or actually really since 2012 when everything first began on LEGO Marvel Super Heroes side, but Iron Man one more time before he dies, Nebula one more time before she dies, the Hulk one more time before whatever happens to him, and then we've got, blah, 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 we've got of course, Captain Marvel and Ant-Man up top here, ready to inherit the MCU after they're gone. And so that's great. You got the real Avengers compound in the background here. So that's kind of, that's kind of nice. And then also uh, we've got Nebula up in the helicopter, but for whatever reason, I use Captain Marvel for that. So uh, whoops. And then you got Iron Man diving out of the freaking car, Captain Marvel sporting the actual size reference on the top. But then of course on the back, you got both of them in the car, both Iron Man and Nebula, they're best buddies now, and they're ready to take on the mad... <coughs> They're ready to take on the Mad Titan in this car. The universe is literally riding on their success. Trillions of people need to be brought back, and they're in a car. And also, we've got the helicopter again with Nebula in there, uh, and then the Ant-Man micro figure, which I kind of forgot to bring up and show in the actual playset, but you saw it. And then we also do have the Hulk, who is supposed to apparently just kind of like sit on top of the meeting room. That, that's not even something I consider, but apparently a thing. And there you go, guys. That is it for our final box for the Lego Endgame sets. Holy crap, man, what a box. Oh, I, I almost forgot, there, there are all these too. These are really cool. Check those out. 
fantastic illustrations. Our final Endgame instruction manual is surprisingly one of the smallest ones of the entire lineup. Even smaller than the actual Ultimate Quinjet because that one was obviously a bigger build without the big figs. And the big figs make up a lot of the cost for this one. But you can see we've got 160 pages in total. An advertisement for LEGO Who Cares. And then we also do have an advertisement for like half of the lineup for the Endgame sets. Or a little more than half considering there's only five sets. But there you go. The Outrider, you know, all, the, all those sets. And then LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2, uh, which is a game that exists and that's it haven't done an extra pieces segment in a while but we get extra time stones and also three extra power stones on those sprues just like we had them for the infinity war sets and an extra one of these keypads which are pretty cool and can kind of be used as like an excuse for the pager that carol gave to fury and so yeah we're done all right, guys, and there you have it. All five LEGO Avengers Endgame set reviews. Thank you guys so much for sticking around for all of these videos, and thank you for sticking around throughout this lengthy review, as I know it went on for quite a while. But if I did help you in deciding as whether or not you plan on picking up not only this set, the Avengers Compound, again, I, I hope you don't, but any of the Endgame sets in general, if I helped you along the way, please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback, and so... Honestly, guys, to keep things simple, if I wasn't reviewing the Endgame sets and the entire lineup as I have, there's absolutely no chance I would have picked up the Avengers Compound Battle, like I said. I probably may or may not even have picked up the Captain America Outriders Battle, because if the Captain America isn't going for too much on Bricklink, I mean, I don't know if I'd be willing to spend 10 extra dollars for a bike I don't really want, or three Outriders I don't really need. Uh, that being said, if it is cheaper to just get the whole set, I would still, I would definitely do that. Otherwise, uh, the Iron Man Hall of Armor is a little bit expensive, and so I don't even know if I would have like immediately just dove into buying that set either, even though it's really good. Um, but the two sets that I can safely say are absolutely worth picking up sooner rather than later are easily the Avengers Ultimate Quinjet. Just a fantastic set despite the repetitive minifigures. And then the War Machine Buster is probably the most solid set of the line because you have not only a really good build, but also a really fantastic set of minifigures with the new Ant-Man helmet and the new War Machine. And it's just a really good set. Uh, uh, for that, you know, $34 price point, I think it was, $35? No, $25? I forget. Uh, $30? I think it's $30. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so... It's been, a, it's been a ton of fun, guys. Um, it, it, this has been, you know, the final set of reviews for the Infinity Saga for Avengers 4. This is really it, man, and it's going to be it for a bunch of the original Avengers. And do I really think this is exactly a culmination of, like, LEGO Marvel superheroes? I, I wouldn't say that. This is not LEGO's best work. I think they could have done better. I think last year's Infinity War line was stronger than this in a lot of different ways. I think LEGO made a lot of avoidable mistakes here and unfortunately i do think the cons outweigh the pros with the end game sets you may or may not agree let me know what you think down in the comments once again but i'm very much looking forward to reviewing all three of the spider-man far from home sets uh, i think they come out april 22nd so i'll be sure to grab those and uh, get started on those reviews as soon as that day comes but um yeah guys uh as far as my own custom end game minifigures go if you want to keep up with all the progress that i'll be making on captain marvel once i get back from star wars celebration and all the end game minifigures as well um as i I finally work toward making them uh, you know before and then after the movie you can tell blah, blah, blah. you can totally keep up with all the progress for those over on my patreon where I uh, post all, this, all that stuff first and uh, so if you want to consider supporting the channel that is a thing otherwise uh, preview photos do go up over on Instagram uh, Twitter and Facebook super cool edits that I do of all the upcoming minifigures all of that happening before um, any of it makes it to the channel here so I highly recommend it if you're interested but otherwise guys that is going to do it for this video thank you so much again for supporting me throughout all of the Avengers Endgame reviews. It has been just insane to review not only these sets, but just most LEGO MCU sets um, since the beginning back in 2012. And uh, again, like I said, I wouldn't exactly say this is like a huge grand finale because LEGO could have done better, but hey man, you know, I would say the Avengers Endgame sets have been really like a split, like a 50-50. Like a um, but yeah. That's going to do it, guys. I, I got to hop on a plane and head off to uh, Chicago for Star Wars Celebration. I hope I'll see some of you there. If not, again, uh, take care. Can you guys hear that?
It's just raining as like hard as possible, just right, right out my window. This is great. Okay. The show must go on. This may be it as for blah, blah, blah. We're covering the uh, blah, 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 blah. question Lego's logic. However, two show blah, 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 blah. the war machine busters. So I think that that did blah, 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 blah. Our new Hulk big figure is big figure. Who says that? But at the same time, man, you can't, you can't, <laughs> ah.